Coming up next will be event 69, the Women's Cup Final. And we'll get to the lane assignment yeah, shortly. Exactly. Sharp Metropolitan Medical Campus salutes the fine athletes who are competing in today's events. Just as these athletes are committed to their sport, Sharp is committed to the health and wellness of the San Diego community. Sharp Healthcare, a proud sponsor of the 2009 36th Annual San Diego Crew Classic. Lane assignments for event 69, the Women's Club Final, Lake Washington in lane one, Rocky Mountain in lane two, Tempe from Tempe, Arizona in lane three, River City Rowing Club out of West Sacramento in lane four, the Lake Merritt Rowing Club in lane five, and Willamette Rowing out of Portland, Oregon in lane number six. And this, Alan, of course, is a race which is handicapped. Um, this is limited to uh, rowers who actually live within a certain distance of the club that they row for. Uh, so these are definitely hometown crews here, no ring-ins. And uh, they will, but they also cover the gamut of, uh, of age groups from uh, open age rowers right through masters. So there's a combination of rowers of, of the various ages in the club. And uh, to reflect that, it's age handicapped. So some crews will go off before others in this race. And uh, if the handicaps are right, they'll all get over the finish line together. This is Bob down at the start. We're currently waiting for a couple of the officials to get back into position after that exciting race we saw earlier. So we're waiting patiently down here at the start for event 69. While we have just a second, we'd like to mention a couple of things. First off, ESPNU will be broadcasting highlights of the San Diego Crew Classic. That will be broadcast first on May 7th at four o'clock in the afternoon, Pacific Daylight Time. And uh, then it will be rebroadcast several times over the subsequent three weeks. So once again, the San Diego Crew Classic will be highlighted on ESPNU on May 7th at four o'clock in the afternoon. Also, if you'd like to have a DVD of an individual race, please consider stopping by the merchandise tent to the right of the Jumbotron and get your DVD of any particular race that you'd like to have. It's an excellent souvenir and is beautifully covered and commentated on by uh, Bob Whitford and uh, Charles Luckman, as well as outstanding camera coverage from seven locations throughout our race course. Uh, just to give you the official result of the Women's Jessup Whittier Cup Grand Final. First, the University of Michigan in a time of 6.43.2. Second, Washington, 6.45.8. Third, Wisconsin, 6.47.2. Fourth, University of Southern California, 6.48.4. Fifth, Oregon State, 6.49.6. And sixth, Washington State University, 652.2. Congratulations to all those crews, outstanding racing, and congratulations to the University of Michigan for their inaugural and well deserved uh, victory in the San Diego Crew Classic Jessup Whittier Cup Grand Final.
five in one inch. And then one out one inch. I will remind you of your starting count. Lake Washington 18, Rocky Mountain 5, Kentucky Count Lake 17, River City 6, Lake Merritt 14, Willamette 15. As soon as we have alignment, I will begin the one with the greatest handicap goes off first, and the scratch boat is last. And as Charles was explaining earlier, it's a matter of all boats crossing at the same time, in theory. But we will sit here at the start line, and they will have no false starts in this race. It will be the responsibility of each crew to go off at the start at the right time, and there is no false starts. If you are, if you jump, then you are simply disqualified. Our first crews have gone off, uh, lanes two of uh, uh, Rocky Mountain and lane five, Lake Merritt. And here comes, excuse me, I was at River City. And then here comes uh, Lake Merritt and Willamette. And then the scratch crews of Rocky Mountain and uh, Lake Washington. So it's really inconsequential to call the start of where we're at right now because the faster boats theoretically have started in the scratch or last position. But I can tell you that all boats have cleared the starting breakage area and Lake Washington Rowing Club is really on pace to hunt down the crews that started first. River City and Rocky Mountain. So those are the early leaders, but remember the fastest boats are trying to come in from the back and overtake those in the, in the leaders in the front, but that early lead was given at the start line through the handicap system. Past the 250 meter mark, all boats have settled in and relatively little change in position at this point. Rocky Mountain is still out in front with River City about a length, about a, a seat down, followed outside by Willamette and Lake Merritt. I reverse those, followed by Lake Merritt and then Willamette. Lake, Lake Washington Rowing Club, rowing strong in lane one on the inside in their blue jerseys, blue and white jerseys. Seems to be making up some of the room. They probably made up about two thirds of their handicap at this point. They're looking very strong. I anticipate them to come on in the middle thousand and overtake this cruise. So as they cross the 500, Rocky Mountain was still out in first, River City, and then uh, Lake, Lake Merritt. But uh, as they turn the cruise over to the finish line, look in the lane one, Lake Washington Rowing Club. I had, I had the uh, privilege of, uh, of watching the heats of this event from the uh, boat that Bob Whitford is in at the moment, uh, late yesterday afternoon, and there was no doubt that the Lake Washington crew took off with purpose yesterday, and uh, it looks as though they've taken off with a similar purpose today. They're in the process of trying to run down their prey here, and they certainly, according to Bob, seem to have done that and uh, they're starting to reel in uh, the other boats in the race. As I mentioned earlier, this is a club event. Uh, entries are limited to people who actually live within a certain distance of their club. So these are hometown crews, no ring-ins. And uh, as a result of that, there is a variety of ages represented in these crews. And that accounts for the uh, handicaps which have been uh, worked out based on the age, relative ages of the crews, respective ages of the crews, and those handicaps have been uh, taken account of right at the start. So the crews have left the start at different times. Now, if those age handicaps are actually reflective of the ability of the crews, then all the crews should come across the line together. But of course, as we all know, that isn't necessarily the case. A fit 40-year-old can be a better rower than a less fit 20 year old. So let's see what happens as this race unwinds. I think you're gonna see the r real merits of the crews involved once we get down uh, into the second half of the race and we're now in the second half of the race. 
and uh, it looks as though Lake Washington uh, certainly have uh, reeled in the other boats at this point as they approach the 750 to go. It looks as though it's Lake Washington uh, having just squeezed past Rocky Mountain and uh, as they come down the crews on the outside uh, look as though it's that they've lost the pace slightly on Lake Washington. Uh, Tempe Town Lake in lane three seem to have an advantage over River City. Uh, River City uh, look to be level pegging but might just have lost the advantage to Lake Merritt and Willamette on the outside seem to be a little bit off the pace at the moment but not so far back that that could not change. As we come down towards the 750 to go, it's Lake Washington still being challenged by Rocky Mountain. Uh, Rocky Mountain again themselves under pressure from Tempe Town Lake and then over on the far side Lake Merritt are still pushing Tempe Town Lake for that third position. Slightly off the pace River City and Willamette but not, not so far off the pace that things could not change. Lake Washington in lane one they've gone for it early they've gone for it in the middle and they're going for it at the end they not only want to be able to say that they won this race but that they won it from the back of the field to going through to the front of the field and that's precisely what they look like they're doing at the moment Lake Washington are coming down to the 500 meter mark as we speak they still have Rocky Mountain in touch with them but they've rode through that Rocky Mountain crew and the cruel reality is that having been rode through, it's unlikely likely that Rocky Mountain are going to come back at them. In fact, Rocky Mountain themselves uh, may find themselves under pressure from both Tempe and Lake Merritt as we uh, come down towards the closing stages of this race with River City and Willamette uh, starting to lose touch with the front runners as they enter the last 500. So coming down on the inside, Lake Washington, pushing the boat away. They know they've got this race tidally in hand at this moment. They've done the hard yards, they've done the hard work here, and uh, they can sit back to a certain extent in this final 250 meters and enjoy the sweetness of victory as they look back to their left and view the other crews uh, scrambling to maintain touch with them. Rocky Mountain have done very well. They've uh, held off the challenge of Lake Washington for some time. They were passed, but they have not collapsed, and they're holding off the challenge that's coming at them from Tempe Town and Lake Merritt in lanes three and five. River City and Willamette uh, are duking it out, although the Willamette crew uh, seems to have uh, hung on in there and may even have gone past River City as we come down into the final stages of the race. Hand round of applause everyone for a very talented, very gutsy and very determined uh, Lake Washington crew who rowing beautifully have powered their way through from the back to the front of this race as they come down to the line. Rocky Mountain maintaining that second position. Uh, the crew from Tempe Town just have overlapped with them, but they're being challenged on the outside by Lake Merritt. And as they come to the line, Lake Washington celebrate the fruits of their victory. Rocky Mountain will be hugely pleased with this row. They've done very well. And Tempe Town rowing with a tandem rig, two rows next to each other rowing on the same side just, I think, hold off Lake Merritt. They're very tight between those two. And then followed by Malamit and River City. So a fine win for Lake Washington, followed by Rocky Mountain, then difficult to tell from up in the tower between Tempe Town and Lake Merritt, followed by Malamit and River City. final. This is a club event that uh, is also like the women's race that just concluded. This is a club event where every member has to be within a 50, me 50 mile radius of their club and it is a reverse handicap. That is that they give the handicap at the starting line so it's a staggered start. The scratch boats go, go last and 
It is the last boat that has just now started off the starting platform. River City is the scratch boat outside in lane six. So we have our early leader, which